great job at a lot of things, man, but this is something different. Yeah. The smell's there too. Yeah. And all yes. those, when that, when all those are activated together, it kind of creates this, yes. man, I'll never forget rolling in there on the first time either. It's almost if when the war machine goes in, that everybody back here just pauses for a second mm -hmm. and lets us get in there bare bones it to figure out what's what yeah. get acclimated yeah. back because we a lot of times they throw all that tech we went in vietnam tech mm -hmm. like the black jackets it's kind of in the stuff in the beginning mm -hmm. and then some of that was stuff was too heavy it didn't operate in this and then you see now after 20 years of war what these operators are having now it's so slick and maneuverable the med yeah. bags i mean all that stuff it's just the tourniquets the the, the, the ashman chest seal that yeah. whole thing it all kind of and that's because people getting out there and bleeding. Yeah. I mean, it, it is in itself a, a teaching tool. Yep. Especially for the medical profession. Absolutely. hundred percent. Those, you know, after action reports, which, you know, I was able to come home and, you know, talk about lessons learned and things like that. And nothing can change what you do more than that real life experience. And so you're right. They've, they've streamlined a lot of things in the I, medical field. You didn't have one of those old leather. She buys me journals every year so I can write in with an old paper on it. It's like, this is the field surgeon. Like that, if you have this at hand, <laughs> slap it on. <laughs> like the, that, that kitchen sink medicine that we had to yeah. figure out when you're out in the middle of nowhere and people are getting hurt. Yeah. Because that stuff does work. Did you have quick clot? Oh, yeah. When you're part of your Not, it, it came in, in cycles because the, the initial would burn yeah. the, on the outside. Right. So they were like, oh, you got to cut it open. I'm like, I'm not going to. Yeah. What? Yeah. And then the other stuff had the, the, the seashells and the shrimp that, they had to crystallized in there and it, yeah. so you had to cut that away so that was causing more problems for y'all so then they changed it and then it went from everything from vaseline dressing to all the way down yeah um the best now is that foam right you just put that sucker in there hit him with that and then give him that fentanyl lollipop tape to his hand and yeah get his ass to you we didn't that's, have that's that. what that was our protocol yeah i could sit on him for 72 hours with a water hose and a pocket knife but other than that it was all you doc <laughs> <laughs> But knowing that each one of you had those skills, you know, had to be a, a, just an immense amount of confidence in, in your It was. And we got that from y'all. We were trained by y'all. My, in my rotations, it was, it was military doctors. Yeah. And then 9-11, it just dropped. And, and, and so we, we were kind of sitting there, and they, they looked at us, and they're like, let me teach you something. And they would pull us in. Yeah. We had carte blanche. That was the best training. It's almost like getting in a jet with a pilot to see where he drops bombs so you can call him in. Yeah. Once y'all started talking to us and we understood your language, Greek, mm -hmm. then you would dumb it down for us. Yeah. And then it was e easy day. And a lot of it can be dumbed down, you yeah. know, as technical as it can be. You're right. It can be, you know, a little bit like fixing a car on a much little more technical level, but for sure you can dumb it down. And in, in the end, you know, as far as the major causes of battlefield trauma and death, not a lot's changed since World War One and Two. you know, stop the bleeding, oh, support yeah. the airway, Absolutely 1%. promote circulation. It was so cool because I remember when you when y'all would yell at us, I was like, man, just, all right, just tell me what to say it easy. And you'd be like, do that. And I'm like, all right. And I didn't remember the big words until a younger kid came in and I was trying to sound, you know, I was like, all right, this is what this is. So. <laughs> but yeah, for the knowledge that y'all have going in there, and, and it's just, it's not, I don't say, I don't mean to say dumb it down. It's like you just learn how to speak a different language. That's right. Like translate Greek into, into whatever works in here. Yeah. And those teachers that can do that made it so much more easy for us to operate. Yeah. Just like good doctors stateside, you know, those that can translate this complex situation into something understandable for your patients, that's, that's the doctor you want, the ones that you gravitate to. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Especially back here when they come out reading all that stuff off the paper and no one knows what it is. Yeah. No, you're supposed to break this down to, to a children's that's book right. when you deliver it to me, right? <laughs> Don't do this, do that. Okay. So you are in the Humvee. It's yeah. pitch black at night. Yeah. You're approaching the true battlefield for the first time. What? We'll take us back to that. Yeah, so th those those three days were just kind of an onslaught of of emotions and and energy, good energy. You know, I, I at this point I just wanted to get it done. I had come to that point where I'm sure every military member does, every warrior does, where you realize I just need to get the job done. I just need to get to the next day and the next day and the next because the only way I'm going home, earning the right to go home, is by finishing the mission. This is the Team Never Quit Podcast. Podcast. So buckle up, Buttercup.